There is an enormous swell of interest, particularly maybe in the last 10 years, I would say. And this is part of a wider shift, I would say, in First World War studies, because initially people were interested in combat. When initially historians spoke about the First World War, they would think about the war experience, and by that they meant the battle experience in the Western Front. But now we are more interested in the inner lives, in the cultural and social aspects. For example, on one hand, of course, they are coming for the First World War, but this is the first time that these hundreds of thousands of Indian troops, they're coming to Europe for the first time, and the shock of their first encounter with European way of life. There is this connection at a personal and intimate level. On the other hand, we have the imperial and colonial structures. We have a racist ideology. And that makes it both fascinating and often quite frustrating. Because do you look at it at an imperial lens? Or do you look at it through the lens of small kind of individual people meeting and building bridges and connections? And I think we have to factor in both these things. And that's why we need political and military maps. At the same time, we need to understand the deep emotional history. And I think one is lost without the other. And I think we shouldn't forget that this is a very hierarchized colonial society we are addressing. So there are often these subtle differences and distinctions. For example, it's, we should remember also that Indians were the only non-white troops of the British Empire who were allowed to fight in Europe. The Jamaicans or the Maoris, they were not allowed to fight in Europe. They were sent, for example, in Mesopotamia. So there is a definite colonial framework. And within that, we have to understand the Indian war experience. This is one of the points through which the ethnic identity of these diasporic Indians can be connected to British history. Because often, we emphasize difference, diversity, and they're absolutely central and important. But they're also shared connections, shared histories. And I think the First World War is so big in European history that this is one of the points that often these Indians, they use that in a way to align their ethnic identity and the achievements of their ancestors to a greater sense of European history. But at the same time, I would say that we should remember it's a traumatic history. Many of the Indian troops, they're victims, but they also were killers. They were fighting. So I think our approach has to be far more nuanced. It's a very traumatic history we are recovering. It can be used to connect different strands, but we have to approach it quite sensitively. Suddenly I find in the diary of an Australian private, uh, this was from the Gallipoli expedition, a page where an Indian sepoy had written his name in three languages, in Urdu, in Gurmukhi, as in English. And suddenly we realize these zones of contact and encounter between, you can call, two colonial cultures, the Australian and the Indian, meeting in Gallipoli through the imperial framework. And suddenly from that one page, you realize these much greater connections happening between war, race, and empire. So that also shows how diverse war experience is. There is no one war experience. It was different for different people. It was different for the Muslims and for the Hindus. It was different for the people who fought and different for the laborers who served behind them. And that is one of the great shifts that we have because I think even in 1960s or 70s, we used to think about Indian war experience. And suddenly we realized, no, there are considerations of class, of caste, of ethnicity. So there is no, no one war experience. Because about the European war experience, it's quite well documented. I'm sure there'll be fresh discoveries. But the colonial experience, it's this huge, teeming, and absolutely fascinating underworld, which is there just to come out into the open. And we are just at the tip of the iceberg, I think, now.